All right, folks, we're inside a 2010 Avenger 123-302 on it. Find the data link connector here. Apparently, the money light is on. Got it. We're gonna see what uh, what codes in it here. Pretty smoky outside today. Doing the three key flickeroo. Wait for our scan tool to fire up. Nothing's coming up on the dash, just a bunch of dashes. Oh, it says gas cap. Now it says gas cap. So what's that tell us? We got an EVAP code. So let's see what code is in it specifically, and then we'll see if we can't uh, fix it for this fella. And he also says he thinks he has a noisy wheel bearing, so we'll take it for a shake. Click. Click, click, click. Nice thing about the uh, Canadian wildfires and the skies being pretty hazy is we don't get glare. <laughs> So we have a large EVAP system leak, PO455 loose uh, fuel cap, so that should be a pretty easy one. Uh, let's go take it for a rip here real quick, let's see if we do hear a noisy wheel bearing. something in that right front when we're swerving. <clears throat> yeah, some kind of weird scraping sound going on in that right front. So we'll look at that when we pick it up on the lift. See what's going on. All right, it's got the big two four. Um, so a couple of things I think of on these when we think of uh, large evap leaks is we could have a purge valve that's not has no flow. You know, so the purge valve isn't turning on. Uh, we could have an actual leak, you know, missing gas cap and stuff. But typically when they come here, they've had four or five gas caps and, you know, parts put at them. And then um, the other thing that's really common on these are the ESIM switch. So the ESIM, ESIM we call it, Emission System Integrity Monitor. Uh, it's a <clears throat> switch in the back of these vehicles on the uh, charcoal canister that when it uh, pulls purge on the system, that switch goes closed, changes status on the scan tool. And uh, we can see that, and then it, uh, you know, calculates how long it stays shut, and so on and so forth. It's it's a little more complex than that. Uh, Mike over at uh, Wells EV, uh, Go Tech Garage. Gosh, I'm losing my train of thought this morning. The smoke it's getting to me. Uh, he does some great videos. I'll try to link those. Uh, fantastic videos on Chrysler and GM and Honda and Toyota. He does some really good EVAP videos. Explains in depth how the ESIM system works. Uh, it's not a very complex system, so they're usually pretty easy to diagnose. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna get this thing up in the air, see if we need a wheel bearing, kind of visual inspection on the uh, EVAP system, see if we you know, see anything, is the gas cap missing? Do we see any big splits and hoses? Purge valve on these lives way down by the steering column shaft where it comes out, real terrible spot to get to. Um, we'll have a look at that and then uh, we'll go from there. So this is a bad wheel bearing. Happened to be on the driver's side. So you can hear it, plus it's loose. Huh, I would have thought it was on the other side. Get the old visual. It's got a metal tank on this little guy. Not really super rusty either. I mean, the car's rusty, but Looks like uh, must be some kind of 
exhaust hanger here or something at some point can be had on here. Fixed. <laughs> Pretty well melted in half. Oh, it looks like yeah, they might have rigged up a muffler on here, so maybe it was dragging at some point. Uh, here's your canister, and here's your famous Esom switch. A lot of times the uh, connector will be corroded right off them babies. We're going to leave it alone right now. We're not going to touch the connector, the electrical connector there. We're just seeing if we see any any big anomalies. It looks like there's drains plugged up here. Nothing to do with the EVAP system, but... I believe it's a towel drain on these. Well, leaf, leaf litter gets stuck in them and then it potentially could flood the inside of the car if it gets plugged up, so... There. Fixed. Now it's got a half a chance of draining out anyways. Still more junk up in there, but I have to run some water through it to get it out. Because the drain above it, the little drain there, that's for the HVAC. This is for the wiper cowl. Still got some junk up in there. clean baby that is where the purge valve lives let's see and hence so I'll turn on that bracket the metal bracket there with the little red tab connector so that's where your purge valve lives this is where the purge line goes back to the uh, fuel tank let's see uh, this one here's the fuel line this is the purge line here so that's where we can hook on if we have to to do a smoke test which usually these don't have an actual real life leak Oh, didn't even have a new gas cap on it. What the heck? Top of the lid's clean. O ring still in place. There's our monochromatic friend, Mrs. O. What's up, Mrs. O? I don't know. I just cut off seeing you. Oh, okay. You just mean you don't want to see these people? I can't see those people. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> So I'll tell you what we're gonna do, folks. We're gonna pop back out of here. Live data. And then we're gonna pick the purge. I think I turned the key on. Let's see, we wanna pick the ESOM ES. I am ESOM switch. And then we wanna pick purge. P-U-R. I got purge duty cycle, purge airflow, purge mode. We're gonna pick purge duty cycle. And then I don't think, I don't think this one has a fuel tank pressure. It does not. So newer Chrysler's do. So we're gonna pick this, go show selected. We're gonna fire it up. Okay. that it shows the purge of 1.99% purge duty cycle. Technically it should be at zero. I'm gonna add, we're gonna add RPM on here or engine speed I guess it'll be listed under. Just to make sure our data pit is live. Okay so right now we're purging it 17.8%. One thing I want to do is we're going to unhook the purge valve hose down here. We're going to make sure that it's actually giving it some sucky sucky. Oh, look at that. The ESOM switch went closed. I was going to say, we're going to check to make sure the ESOM switch actually works, and it does. So that's interesting. We may actually have a real life leak, uh, which is unusual. So what we expect to see here 
what I was thinking of, I was thinking our switch wasn't working, but here it is, it works. So typically it'll put on a purge, the switch will go closed, we'll stop the purge and we'll see how long the switch stays closed and then it can determine whether or not we have an actual leak. So being that the system looks like it works, the purge works, the ESIM switch works, see it just went back to no, that's interesting. Must be a massive leak if that's the case, or the switch is being intermittent. But we saw it work. But where it's pulling that much purge, I would expect that switch to be closed. I'm curious if we have, we might, usually the switches are bad. That's usually what happens. We pull a purge on it, switch never goes closed, always says no. And you know, it's just a faulty switch. So that's kind of curious. We saw it work initially. So that's what I was gonna tell you. That's what we're waiting for. Put a purge on it, switch goes closed. We see how long it stays closed. And that tells us if we have a leak. It's a pretty simple system. Uh, what I would say at this point, we either have a really massive leak or we have a switch that's gone wonky, which is what I would suspect more than anything. So let's shut it off. Um, I'm gonna unhook this real quick. I just want to hear. Let me just see if we actually make sure the purge is working. So I unhooked the line from the purge. I'm just gonna hook a little nipple on it here so we can see if it's pulling vacuum. So I got the right size one here. And it is, I can feel it sucking on my finger. I just wanted to make darn sure. Actually, we're gonna leave this, uh, we're gonna leave the purge line right off from it. We're gonna grab the Avoca Smoka. Now that we know it's purging for real. Oh, look at that, so the switch just went back closed again. And technically, if I unhook the line off the purge, it should say no, so I'm gonna, I got the line hooked back up even though I told you I unhooked it. I unhooked it and now it went back to no. Okay, I'm gonna hook it back up. Oops, I clicked it on too far. We'll give that a second and that switch to change to yes, so it did. It's like Katy Perry, it's yes and it's no. It's hot and it's cold. Get it? Sorry, it's the best Katy Perry I've got. So what we're gonna do, I suspect, I still suspect we have a bad switch. I'd, I would be surprised if we had an actual leak for realsy. Work on a lot of EVAP systems. Work on a lot of Chrysler's. A lot of GMs, rarely do I see leaks on Chrysler's. So we're gonna take the tip off the Avoca Smoka. I'm gonna unhook the line again. Ooh, I don't know if that's gonna fit. Let's see if we can't get it stretched over that stand pipe there. I'll show you guys here in a second. Oh, we're in. We're gonna hook her up to something positive. We must have one of them big thumping stereos in there. Now we need something negative. Now we need an air hose. We'll turn it on. Now this system we can't seal. Like boop, push a button and seal. Because it doesn't have a canister vent valve. It has the ESIM switch, which closes under pressure and closes under vacuum at a very specific amount a very light amount uh, I don't know what the what the values are but they're low um, you know so many inches of water it mechanically closes but then it can also bypass beyond that vacuum and beyond the pressure like I say check out uh, go tech garage they'll give you the skinny on that so that's where I hooked up right down there we uh, unhook the purge line from where it goes to the back of the vehicle and I hook my smoke machine to it 
Oh, yeah, we got her out here gurgling away. Of course, we got her hair sucked up. So let's raise this baby up and plug off the uh, vent there in the back. Oh, it's pinching. Turn this back on. Come back, yeah. See that some smoke. Ooh, we see all the coal now, boys. We're gonna pinch this little guy off. It's like pinching off a brake hose, yet you don't get as many comments. Okay, so that's pinched off. Now, we're gonna let her sit here and smoke away. We're gonna keep an eye on her flow gauge. That should start to come down if we have no leak. Oh, she's dropping like a rock. Oh, she's dropping quick. I didn't think we had a leak. But we'll let it sit here and finish filling up. We've got a bad switch. I almost bet you on it. If you're a gambling man, you don't have a smoke machine. You got this code in your car. Uh, these things are like, I don't know, 30 bucks maybe. Just take a big fat guess. <laughs> but you gotta be careful on these Avengers because that purge valve, okay, where that purge valve sits, now you can't see it from down here. The problem is the shift cable. Okay, so the shift cable comes out here. You can see how it's kind of rubbing through on this uh, engine mount. See how that cable's just about rubbed through there or how it rubs through. It goes around and it actually rubs on the purge valve also. So there's the bottom of the purge valve and that shift cable rubs a hole in the bottom hose of the purge valve. Very, very common on these cars. And that'll also set a uh, gross evap leak code, or sometimes it starts out with a small evap leak code. This one's already been changed on this car. Yeah, our flow gauge is almost to the bottom. I'm probably not going to sit here and wait all day for that to get down. Uh, we don't have a leak. We've seen our ESIM switch working uh, on and off a little bit. It tells me our wiring going up to the front is likely good. We likely have just a failed switch uh, because like I said they have a weight and a spring in there and they mechanically stop at a certain point certain amount of vacuum um, this one clearly is going wonky one thing I want to check though before we get too carried away before we get all carried away is to see if the connector is all green a lot of times they are this one is not but quite often on the back of the switch the plastic will be all broke out and they'll be all green and pussy so sometimes you have to get the connector too that one looks okay and the other warning i can give you be ye warned if you're using an old version of altel the altel data pit for the eSIM switch for many many years did not work it always says no i've probably told you guys in the past it almost cost me an ecm once uh, but fortunately, I was smart enough to try a different scan tool because I didn't believe it. But uh, there we are. And there we have it, folks. Flow gauge all the way at the bottom. Smoke machine's on. Full blast. No leak. All we got left now to do is rate the estimate uh, for the wheel bearing and for the uh, ESOM switch and now it fixes engine light and fixes uh, growl noise in the front end. The other noise, I guess, road noise you have driving down the road, you're still running four snow tires on this thing. So they're pretty noisy, but a lot of folks do that around here because we have more winter than we have summer. <laughs> um, and we'll see if we get the job or maybe he's gonna do his own work or maybe he knows a guy who can do it cheaper. Uh, but either way, we'll, uh, we'll give him an estimate and then, uh, so stay tuned. All right, lucky for us, the guy said get after it. He said get her done, gave him an estimate, he was happy. We'll hook this baby back up on the Avoca Smoker. What kind of kit did I use, you ask? Good question. Uh, so this is the, uh, maybe it's this one, it's one of these. One of these nipples here if I can find it. I don't know which one I use. One of the straight ones uh, to hook up to that purge uh, valve or to that hose rather so we can see if the purge is working. So this is a little bit of kit put out by Redline. Find it. Boom. There it is. Smoke machine. Quick connector kit. There's your part number. Made by our friends at Redline. It's a great bit of kit. I use this sucker all the time because more and more cars don't come with a little green 
cap, you know, that you hook up with the with one of these little guys. So these things just grow dust anymore, it seems, uh, because we're unhooking and we're just tapping right into the purge or wherever we can if we got to hook in back at the um, canister. So this comes with all kinds of little fittings. Great bit of kit. So I always keep this around here. Keep it right next to the Avoca Smoker. So in case you guys want that. Uh, the guys that get after it, uh, maybe I told you that. Got parts coming. We're gonna start ripping and tearing before uh, things show up, which is always a no-no. But we'll see, hopefully Napper, who doesn't sponsor us, uh, doesn't let us down, and everybody will be happy. We're gonna start over here on the driver's side. This is when they had the super duper loose bearing. The bearing on the passenger front, when I spin it, I'm about 90% certain that one is noisy over there. This one's obviously noisy and loose. Uh, I explained that to the guy what my feelings were and how I felt deep in my soul. He just said change them both, which is a wise idea. So we're gonna do that. Uh, procedure's the same on both sides. So guys, I'll show you this one. No sense in showing you that one over there. Uh, brakes are brand new on this thing. Looks like uh, relatively new caliper pads, rotors, so that's gonna save us some time. We'll just peel off the whole caliper and bracket all in one shot. It looks like probably an 18 mil lumeter. So I'm gonna get some tools there. Putter in reverse, we'll come back here. There's one bolt for the bracket. A one a bolt for the bracket. A two bolts for the back. If we're doing it like the count on Sesame Street. We're gonna hang her up here by a hook. Move your rotor, give it the customary twirl in your hands. Give it a look, she's clean, smooth, new looking. And let's get a 30 or 32. Oh yeah, first try, sweet. This is 32 mm. No backing plate, and it looks like the bolts that hold this on are probably of the 15 millimeter variety, at least the head is. The bolt itself looks like it's a 10 millimeter. You know what I mean. Come on, man. I think it's 15, it's just a little. Girl, you're crusty. There we go. We're good. Boom, she sprays two ways, almost like me in the morning. <laughs> Flip your sprayer down. Full liberal douching of this. There you go, boys. There you go. Here it comes, Papa. All right, the two way spray. Now we're gonna see if we can't get this thing to crack loose. Oh, this guy just forgot an extension. I don't have the car up high enough to get you guys under there. But you'll see, you'll get the gist. We've probably only changed three or 400 wheel bearings on this channel. <laughs> get that on there. Oh yeah, that's a good job. That's a good job, fella. Now we just need to do that three more times. WD really makes that bolts come out easy, don't it? The way it just penetrates in there. Oh, look. I probably could do this with a crescent wrench at this point. Oh, I wasn't even out all the way, dude. They're falling out. Jerk. Mm. WD-40 ain't doing so good for you now, is it, pal? 
I need an Uggy Duggy gun. There's one. Now we just need to do that three or more times. Ah! <laughs> oh. Get up on that, fella. All the bolts are out. We'll try to give it a little tap. Sometimes the little guys will come right off with a little tap. And sometimes they don't. Let's get down here. Oh, ho, ho, ho. That could have been ugly. You sucker, you're gonna keep missing? We didn't get any Debbie D down in there as well. Plus we got her coming off all cockeyed. Oh, there she is, boys. I feel like turn too easy anymore. I don't know why. Time to make it shiny. Got a mind of her own. She must need a little WD. Now <laughs> she's all seized up, boys. How did this happen? What the frick? That's quite close enough. I tried it. I think the little trigger's stuck in there. All she needed was a little WD. This stuff will cure the common cold. I swear. See if she'll tighten that jam nut back up there. Well, we're gonna have to get some tools. Yeah, we'll tighten the jam nut up. She'll be good as new. Wow, that escalated quickly. Let's see if this one works. Hey, speed sensors in here, so don't go wallering that thing up. All right, looks good.
didn't have to show it up with our berry right in the middle of the sneezing fit, folks. Whew. I can't stop. With all this Canadian smoke it is thick out there today, boys. Thick. It makes me sneezy. It makes my throat scratchy. We're going to put some blue Loctite on these bolts. All four of them. Get the other three here. Ah, uh, bad enough to have allergies. The Canada sends down all their smoke, or it's the government, one or the other, trying to block the sun to kill the machines. You know, you guys watch the Matrix, right? That could be what's happening. So there's that. We'll get these babies in. We'll torque them down to factory specs, of course. Typically, there would be a backing plate on this car. And that hole, this hole, and one down here somewhere, you know, three bolts hold them little guys on. But typically, they rust off. And then people just say, forget about it, you know? Forget about it. that trigger boy we're going to the 720 inch pounds or 60 foot pounds However you look at it. There's that one. Oops, dropped my watch. Wait for the other Napa to show up. We got stuff coming from two different Napas to do the other side, but they said they're gonna be a little while. Gosh dang it! My nose is running, my knees are weak, can't seem to stand on my own two feet. Well, my hands are steady ish. So there's that. She's all. Torque to factory spec. We'll grab that nut. This nut. We'll spin that on with the Ugga Dugga gun. Crank her down as tight as we can get. Torque level one. We forgot. Whoa. Hey, easy dude. Enough on there for two of you. A little blue Loctite on there, even though there's some oil on the threads. <laughs> Go find a torque wrench. We'll jam this one down to 1,200 foot-pounds, inch-pounds, not foot-pounds. We ain't got that much lead in our pencil. There it is. We double-checked it. Tiger tight. Let's get our rotor. Find our fluid film here. Give that a little spritz, keep it from getting crusty. Man, this rotor is like new. Nothing to clean out on the inside, which is great. Whose lucky day is it? It's our lucky day. Let's grab the one nut. I wonder why they call them lug nuts. You ever think about that? Wheel nuts, I understand. Lug nuts. Oh, wait, is this, go this goes on the front, idiot. Oh, my pads are all loosey goosey in here. So that baby's apart. Oh, stay. The hose will catch it. I'm going to grab some lock tight here. 
Now I gotta move everything because I already moved you guys. Put a little bit here. Are those the lugs? And that's the lug nut. Never thought about that. That's super deep. Don't mean to get all philosophical on you. That's probably not even the right word. You know what I mean. We'll jam these babies down to 108.5 Newton meters. There it is. Or 80 foot pounds, I think it was. For you Americans. And there you go. Put your wheel on, jam her down to 100 or so foot pounds, and call it a day. Once your wheel bearings are done, tighten up your wheel. We'll come back here. Give that a push. There's a little release tab on the bottom of this thing. Push it out, and boom, there it goes. Take it off and give it a shake. Oh, drop that sucker right smack on the floor. It comes with a new O-ring. What we're gonna wanna do is just come back here and have a look, see it sits up in there. She's usually pretty clean. Grab yourself some Astro Glide, or so glide. <laughs> One or the other, they'll probably both work. We'll lube up our O-ring off camera where you can't see it. That way you can't criticize it. You still can, that's okay. We'll give her a full lubing around. And the seal glide, we'll stick her up there. Should get a light so I can see what I'm doing. Give it a little one of those. Click. And another click. And another click. Three clicks. Wipe off your greasy prints. Oh, make it a hundred times worse. Now let's go see if it works. Reach in here and fire this pig up. Engine light's still on. We haven't cleared that or anything. Got our data right there. We'll open our door. Let the smoke in. It's pretty hazy out. Oh, smoky. Quite hard to tell in the video. And then we'll just sit here and wait. Here's the part number on that switch. If you need it. Then we'll wait for the purge to kick on, then we'll see if the switch goes closed and actually stays closed what, during the purge event. So I kept the camera rolling. As soon as the purge valve kicked on, the switch went closed. And we're looking for that status to stay at yes. It's gonna run through you know, a few tests and check for gas cap, but usually it doesn't do that until after a, uh, a refueling event, but I think it's pretty safe to say that it's lunchtime, noon whistle going off. But we can see now that during a purge that the ESOM switch is closing. We know that there's no leak in the system, so we don't really have to do much further, but um, I think if you guys rewind, you'll uh, remember that it was switching from yes to no. It was like Katy Perry, remember? Made a corny dad joke. So that's it, show's over, let's take it for a wrap. Here we go, folks. Make sure you pump up your brakes. Just in case your calipers got pushed back a little bit. Let's head through the smoke. Oh, it says it's 47 degrees outside. That can't be right. It's gotta be at least 65. noise so that's good all I hear now is tire noise to be expected but you almost can't see the end of the hill that's not very far away we're heading north now
And that's that, folks. A uh, couple wheel bearings fixing the uh, EVAP system on your Chrysler. Like I say, I'll link the video there to the NGK, GoTech Garage, Wells, EV, whatever they were at the point they made those videos. Uh, my guy Mike Becker, smart dude, made some fantastic videos on Chrysler EVAP system. So go check that out so you know how they work, so you can know how to fix them. Uh, or just take a guess, change a couple parts, you'll probably get it. Uh, you just got a couple parts and a few wires. It's getting hard to breathe. A little smoke's rolling in. Hopefully they put out Canada soon. It's just kind of nuts, man, to see uh, the visibility less than a quarter of a mile. It's kind of it's kind of weird. Never seen anything like it. Maybe it's the apocalypse. I don't know. I'll get a bug out bag ready, and why don't you guys bug out in that comment section? Questions, comments, the insty. The Facebook, you know where to find us. Not on TikTok, though. That's an imposter. And uh, when we do find them, well, you know. Uh, and that's it. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.